I'm sure many of you have heard the term internal alchemy, and, and I imagine some of you practice it as well. Um, it's a term that we hear often when we're talking about um, Tao's cultivation and uh, the Chinese energy arts. Um, but what is it? Um, what is internal alchemy? What is not internal alchemy? And how does internal alchemy fit into the, the overall project of, of Taoist cultivation? What's the relationship there? Uh, these are some of the questions I want to look at today. So internal alchemy is a, it denotes a, a system of energetic transformation, um, usually referred to in Chinese as Nei Dan. Um, however, <laughs> there are many terms that we use for, uh, for internal alchemy. And Dan Dao, Jin Dan, Zhi Dao, Lian Dan. There's many different words we can use in Chinese to denote uh, internal alchemy. Um, and before I go any further, I should say that, that uh, internal alchemy will be different for different lineages and also it, will, it varied historically over time. So the, the definition and, and that I'm going to put forward here, um, it comes from my own, uh, my own teacher, Wang Liping, who is from the, the Longmen Pai, Dragon Gate lineage, and his teachers. Um, and so it's from a specific um, lineage at a specific point in time, right? So uh, bear that in mind as we go through this talk. Um, I remember when I first met my teacher Wang Liping, um, at the first retreat I did with him, actually I think it was after the first session, we were walking back um, after one of the sessions and we were chatting and he, all of a sudden he just said, internal alchemy is. <laughs> And he gave me a very clear definition of what it is. And uh, so I'll share that with you guys. He said, El internal alchemy is um, any method or technique that works to form the um, elixir or the embryo, the sacred embryo. If it's doing one of those two things, then it is internal alchemy. If it's not, then it's not internal alchemy. So very, very specific. He gave me, excuse me, a very specific framework to understand internal alchemy within. Um, and uh, so very clear, right? So if it's a method or technique, something we're doing to either make an elixir or the embryo, then it is internal alchemy. If it's not doing one of those two things, then it's something else. It might be some, some sort of qigong or neigong or other form of, um, of, of uh, energetic exercise, which can be very powerful, right? There's a lot of really good stuff out there, but it's not internal alchemy. Now, the caveat and, and um, thing we have to keep bear in mind is how do you define elixir and how do you define the embryo? And that will change depending on the lineage and depending on um, history as well. And also, and this is where it gets really tricky, depending on the level of practice. So there's different levels to practice and in each level, what the elixir is and what the embryo is will shift, right? So to understand uh, Taoist stuff, we have to bear in mind that it's, it's all contextual. <laughs> in other words, a definition of something depends on the context that it's embedded in, right? So. Um, we have to bear that in mind. So these terms can shift depending on what we're doing and the relationship with other things, right? So speaking from, from my experience with my teacher, and uh, let's take a look at what the embryo, what the elixir is and what the, the embryo are. So uh, from a basic level of, of understanding, the uh, elixir is basically a, um, a supercharged sphere of energy, um, of chi. And um, it's, uh, we can use it for, um, there's a process we go through to create the elixir. And once the elixir is formed, we can then use it within the body and even outside the body for various um, various reasons. Um, there are different kinds of elixirs within our lineage, at least nine that, that I'm um, aware of. Um, um, and the elixir will 
will change depending on which kind of ingredients we're putting inside we're putting inside the elixir to make it. So when you're forming an elixir, the, the, the metaphor that I always reach for and, and the one that, that is there when it's being taught in terms of the, the texts and whatnot is generally metaphors of cooking. <laughs> Okay, so internal alchemy, it borrows terms from external alchemy. Um, and so it borrows these terms and uses them as, a, as metaphors to help us understand um, this uh, system of energetic transformation. Um, and so basically cooking, right? I think we've all done some cooking. Myself, not so much. I'm not a good cook. Um, but you, you go into the kitchen. First thing you want to do when you cook is have a recipe. Uh, you get your recipe, then you want to have um, a source of heat, the furnace. You also want to have um, a container to, to cook everything in, that's the cauldron. Um, and then you, have, you need ingredients, you need something to cook. And the ingredients are different kinds of energy, uh, in, both inside and outside the body. So there's uh, internal ingredients, uh, medicine, and the external ingredients or medicine. So the word for in, uh, in internal alchemy is the, the yao, ne yao, wai yao. The yao is, uh, is herbal medicine, right? Um, basically just the ingredients we use. Uh, and you, you gather those ingredients, um, do it following specific instructions inside the body, right? You gather those ingredients, you put them into the, the pot, the cauldron, you put the lid on the pot and you crank up the, the heat and you, you, you fire it. And um, if you did it, if you did all, all those procedures correctly, <laughs> uh, you will have something nice to eat, maybe a nice chocolate cake or whatever it is you're cooking. Um, and if, you, if, if something didn't work along the way, then you, you know, you'll either, either burnt the cake or it won't be cooked or, or, or whatnot, and you go back and you, and you, you give, her, give her a try again, right? Uh, you, uh, you go through the process again. Um, and so that is the elixir. And that's that in Chinese, dan. Now, dan doesn't necessarily mean elixir. It's interesting with Chinese alchemy, um, speaking about English, we're, we're borrowing a lot of English terms to um, to understand these 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 uh, these uh, native Chinese um, practices, right? So there's some um, distortion that happens there. So the word dan uh, elixir actually means cinnabar, and cinnabar is a specific um, mineral thing. <laughs> uh, it's actually poisonous if you take cinnabar. Uh, in, that's used in external alchemy, right? And so these are metaphors, right? So we're using dan in, so in, in, uh, in terms of internal alchemy. Um, so this talk is about internal alchemy, right? So cinnabar, um, elixir. Elixir is okay. I usually just use that translation. Um, and um, working with the elixir, going through that process of cooking, um, it's a very specific process um, that involves heat, um, furnace, cauldron, sealing it up and firing it, right? So using the qi the, huo, the, the, the firing process. Um, and that is one way of doing internal alchemy, but it's not the, the only way. There is another way that we can use as well, and that is um, to form the sheng tai, the, 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 the sacred embryo. And within our lineage, and each lineage will have their own way of talking about these terms and practicing this stuff, um, the way that my teacher explained it to, to us is that it's like you're climbing a mountain, right? So, you, so from, you're climbing a mountain with two peaks. And so for most of the climb, say two-thirds of the climb, the mountain's the same. You, you find the path and you walk up it, right? But at some point, you can choose to go up one peak to form the elixir or go up the other peak to do the uh, sacred embryo. Um, he's also used the metaphor of walking down a road and then it has a split in the road to two different goals, right? Um, now the peak for forming the sacred embryo is a higher, harder, more complicated peak. And in a lot of, um, in some, I shouldn't say a lot, but in some, I know in some lineages of Neidan from talking to other practitioners, uh, you do the elixir first and then you do the embryo second and generally with ours that's true as well but it's not necessity right you can choose to do just the you can just just do the embryo and never do an elixir if you wanted to so anyways <clears throat> 
If the elixir is all about cooking, what's the embryo? Well, if you cook the embryo, <laughs> you fire it, you're going to burn it and there's going to be nothing left. So we don't, we, so, so it shifts and the metaphors we use shift and they shift to, uh, they, they take on, we use this language and metaphors of, um, giving birth to a baby. Um, you have a mother and a father, they get together, uh, and uh, I won't go into that discussion in this talk, <laughs> but they give birth to a, a baby. The baby gestates inside the mother's womb for however long and then is given birth and becomes its own being, right? So it's actually a really good, met it's, 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 it's a really good me metaphor because the, the, the experience of going through that process is very similar. Um, the mother is the human body. The uh, womb is um, the lower field. I mean, what some people call the lower dan tian, but we're not working on a dan here, so it's just a lower field. Um, that that's the womb. We even have the placenta um, that we work on. It within, it's within the uh, within the the actual methods and techniques. We'll actually form the placenta around the, the embryo. Now, what's missing? We need the the sperm, right? And so the sperm is um, um, it can be the shen guang, the light of the spirit. Um, it's it's um, our true nature uh, that we then put in uh, into the womb and it gestates with the egg. There's an egg, there's a period of gestation, it's given birth, and we nurture it. Um, we use techniques of bathing and cleansing to, to nourish and nurture. So the, the verbs we use, are, it's not firing <laughs> and uh, uh, burning, right? It's, it's uh, like it, with, with the elixir, you know, the language is shaolian, you know, just like, just fire it. <laughs> With, with this, it's, it's um, wen yang, you, know, you, 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 you nourish it, you, you raise it um, inside. Now, the complexity comes from the ingredients that we put in there are different. And so what we're going to, there's a, a, a lot of um, practices we use at this stage, techniques and methods. Um, and it's very, very interesting. Um, but I won't go into a lot of detail on what that is. The only thing I'll say is it's more, I hate to use this word because it's not, but psychological, <laughs> you know, uh, it's more about who we are, our, 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 our true inner nature and where we've come from and, and discovering the essence of that, not in a very specific way, using very specific methods, right? So to re-experience the birth process, the process of our own conception, um, Ting Fu Imu, if you know, so there's a, a range of practices which we use at this stage to imp and put that information, to imprint that information into the embryo, right? So the embryo really becomes a little mini me. It, 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 it has our spirit, our, our, our soul, um, and these different aspects of ourself inside. It's not just chi. It's not just a, a, a sphere of energy that we're firing, right? There is something a lot more, um, more to it. Um, um, and, and the process is, is harder to complete. Uh, and so that's the embryo, sacred embryo. So you have these two goals with internal alchemy. And that's when we practice internal alchemy. Um, if the methods and techniques are leading towards one of those two goals, then that is internal alchemy. If it's not, then it's not internal alchemy. And that's not to say it's less than internal alchemy. There are um, practices within our lineage that are actually more powerful than internal alchemy, um, practices that work with light and whatnot. Really interesting stuff, but it's just, it's, it's just not internal alchemy. It doesn't, it's not derogatory, right? I'm not, I'm not saying it's less than. It's just different. And that's just from the perspective of our, of our lineage, right? So other lineages might approach us differently. Um, now, I think that brings us to, to the important part of the discussion is what is the relationship between internal alchemy and Taoist cultivation? Because they're not the same. Um, there are lineages of Taoist cultivation that do not do internal alchemy. 
and they're very powerful, very, very good lineages, right? Um, and within our lineage, there is a lot of stuff that my teacher, Wang Liping, is passing on that is not internal alchemy. Internal alchemy is the core of what he practices. It's, what, it's the juice that drives the other stuff that we harness to work these other practices, mainly the, the five arts and the, um, the yin xian methods. Um, <clears throat> so what is the relationship there? So when I started teaching um, this stuff, I, I thought about what in, how in English am I going to represent this? And I settled on Taoist alchemy. And that was, that was a really conscious decision on my part because what my teacher's teaching, what I'm teaching, is more than just internal alchemy. It's also Taoist cultivation. So Taoist alchemy represents um, internal alchemy and Taoist cultivation together, right? And that's why I like that term Taoist alchemy. Because internal alchemy isn't, um, necessarily Taoist. It's, it's generally considered Taoist. I think most lineages were, but there are conf uh, Confucian lineages <laughs> that do internal alchemy. There's some Buddhist people that do internal alchemy. Um, there's just lay practitioners who, who, who don't, aren't associated with those traditions or lineages. Um, <clears throat> uh, it really depends on the lineage, right? So, so back to the point, what is the relationship? Well, this is, uh, the way I've come to know it, and this is the way my teacher talks about it, is that internal alchemy is a tool to help us on the path of Taoist cultivation. Taoist cultivation is the overall big pr project, the big umbrella, the project of spiritual cultivation. Uh, internal alchemy is, is, is simply a useful tool that can help us on our path of Taoist cultivation. So it's really important um, that we don't confuse <clears throat> Mastery of internal alchemy is mastery of Taoist cultivation, right? Uh, Taoist cultivation is the important part. Internal alchemy, you don't need internal alchemy to, to, to master Taoist cultivation, right? It's just a helpful tool. And um, the way my teacher, use, he uses this distinction. It's within the Chinese language itself. And there's a word for practice called, um, well, not practice, but cultivation and practice together called xiu lian. Um, and xiu uh, in Chinese, is usually translated as cultivation. It means to um, to rebuild, to make better, um, and then lian is to um, practice. But in this word, um, it's actually refined. But it sounds the same lian. It sounds the same in Chinese, but the characters are slightly different. They have a different radical on the side, and I'll do an overlay of that so you guys can see that uh, for you Chinese language nerds out there. Um, and so xiu lian is usually put together, and together it can mean training or, or whatnot, or practice, go practice something, go work on something. But if we split those characters apart, right, xiu is Taoist cultivation, lian is internal alchemy. Lian can also be, it can be tai chi quan, like tai chi, um, it can be meditation, it can be qi gong, nei gong, it can be all that stuff, right? That's the lian. And those are um, um, yo wei, uh, so methods that we apply in three-dimensional time and space, right? Um, so it's something that has a goal. We have a specific sequence that we, things we want to work on. There's a process. We work towards that goal in time uh, and try to get results, right? And call the yo. Those are yo wei methods, right? Uh, if you know what that term means. Um, and that's Lin, and that's good. It's good stuff, fun stuff. And a lot of what, uh, of what my teacher teaches is the Lin stuff. Xiu is a little different, right? Xiu is cultivation. It's um, that uh, the Confucians would say, Confucians would call it becoming um, a, a person, becoming human, to really become human. And for them, that bar is set very high. Um, right, right up there with Buddhist enlightenment to become human, uh, and for the Taoists, return to the Tao, or, or, or however you want to conceive of of, of that. Um, that's the Xiu, right? So we have the Xiu and the Lian, and and they are different. Um, generally, in teaching, I focus on on Lian, right? Xiu is important, but it's it's more up to us as individuals to figure that out. We need to understand what that process is all about. Um, and how can we become better people and how can we, we go through a system of, of spiritual cultivation, right? Um, and of course, internal alchemy 
will help with that. It'll help us understand who we are as energetic beings. It'll help us in, in learning how to transform energy. Qi hua. Um, we get we get a lot of information, right? That can really help us on our path of of um, uh, on the path, right? <laughs> the Tao. Um, but they are they are different. 